Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to do just a quick setup guide for M Super Looper. So some of you are probably wondering like how to use this, or maybe like just turn it on. Like what what am I supposed to do? So let's go over it. So first thing I want to do is just turn on the limiter here, just in case things get too loud. And uh, next I want to go into the settings. So if you notice, if you just hit, hit record now, it's like, hey, it's not doing anything. And the reason it is, you need to turn on play in the DAW playback. If you don't want that, you can just hit follow host playback here and turn it off. And wherever you hit record, it'll start playing like this. So now that just plays on its own, but uh, let's say you don't want that. So now I'll turn this back on and I hit record with follow host playback. Nothing happens. You see nothing's recording. So it's waiting for me to hit the host playback here. So if I uh, play this. like that, and it will play uh, synced to your DAW. So if I play this, actually, I shouldn't say that. It's not synchronized to your DAW in this mode. It's just controlled by your DAW. So whenever your DAW is playing, it will play. Uh, but we'll reset that. So that's another mode if you like that, if you just wanna you know, do things in your own tempo and you don't wanna sync this up to your DAW. But if you do, which I usually do, I wanna hit the sync button here like this. And so you notice next to the track count, you'll have default bars. So you can set however many bars you want here. So all the way up to, I don't know, 64. But let's try just two bars, okay? And let's try to record something. So in this mode, one of the differences is I can hit record and the record button won't start until the beginning of the next bar. So if I have my metronome on my DAW, I can let it play for one bar in the second bar, third bar, whenever I hit record, it will start playing at the beginning of the next bar, like this. So you get the idea, the rhythm is not perfect there, but you understand what you, what you can do with this. And of course I could do the other two tracks and I could do even more tracks here if I want 16 tracks, I could do that. And you're wondering, okay, like that's good, but what's the other stuff? So if you look here, you see I have this one and two, and you're like, what is this? So this is like an alternate track. So if I don't want this and I want something else that I can switch between, I could record here and then switch between them easily. So let's play this again and record on the second loop here. So that's how that works. And you can switch these in real time by using like MIDI or there's other things you can do with it. I'll try to do those in future videos, but I want to keep this kind of short and sweet and to the point. Another thing is you have this, this is the reverse button. So I'll play this and it'll play the loop in reverse. So get the idea of what you can do with that. Another thing here is you see the FX and settings. And if you're wondering what that does, just go into here and I can one, rename this. So I can rename this bass drum, just in case you want it to be a little bit easier to see. And uh, also I can add some effects or something. So if I wanted to add a delay to a bass drum for some reason. Uh, 
I think this is one of the greatest things because this actually has all these effects. There's tons of them in here you can use and mess with uh, on top of everything else. And you can save it as a preset. And if you have uh, something like um, uh, MXXX, you can use those presets here inside here and just open them up and ooh, I'll use whatever I want. So that's cool. Uh, but let's see. Other things in here, just the basics. I think that's pretty much it. You can also export all these loops. So if I wanted to use these something else, if I wanted to like um, export them in, as a WAV file, I can just do that by clicking here. I can import them. And there's actually another easier way to import it. So besides clicking that, let me just clear this. Now, before I have it synced, if I think, oh, I have like a drum loop, but I don't want to like get the tempo of the drum loop. That's too annoying. All I have to do is just open this up wherever you have a drum loop here, and I just take one of these, and all you have to do is just drag and drop. But don't drag and drop it on this overall track one here. Like if I drag it here or something, it doesn't do anything. Drag it where it has the loop, like loop one, like this. Now you notice it's in here, and now I can play this like this. So now it's following the play button in the DAW, but you see it's not synced up. So you could do any type of drum loop you have and add it in there like that to start it. And then you could play your guitar over it or whatever you want. So there's lots of things you can do with that. Um, I think that's fairly easy. Maybe I'll go over some more advanced things because there are a lot of things you can do in here that uh, maybe you didn't realize. And there's lots of different genres you can use with this. So this can be used as like a live tool, but it can also be used as a songwriting tool or just like a practice tool. So uh, hopefully this gave you an idea of some different ways to use this. Uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those down below. And until next time, see you.